Oh, look at that. It just, I think it just got me out. You know, I had a question. Why is it, um, is it normal that you have these numbers like that? Yeah. The, the red and the blue? I wonder what happened here. Yeah. You don't have any? Man, I can't believe that! But I thought it was like an invisible trade going on when I peeked over. You know, the, the, the positive thing about it is I was like at $900 right up in here. So what should have been the clue to get out? I guess I guess I thought in my mind this is where I should have got out anyway, and I was hoping once again I was hoping to ride the train. Uh, maybe that was the bottom line because I could have been nine hundred bucks ahead. And you really thought about flattening? Yeah, I really thought about putting my my fill right here, but I thought if it got up, well, actually, I thought of putting my fill here, but then when it punched through. I thought maybe it'd just keep on punching through. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good deal, how's it going? When I was moving things around, after uh, well, I'm here to learn. Looks like a trade. I want to see your student <laughs> mentality. <laughs> you know, that's what I said when uh, I filled out my business plan, part of the homework when you first starting out. Yeah. And I put my edge is I have a student mentality. Oh, that's your edge. <laughs> <laughs> David Ward was probably like, Shh. this girl. Oh, thank you very much. Do we have bandwidth issues again? Uh, as you see, things are really super rocky. It was quiet for a second. Yeah, but I see the little icon at the top. Okay. There you go, Jeremy. Our, the icon at the top for this thing is all red for the reason why. Uh, I wish I'd have come here as well. It's not. Quite, it sounds like he's jerking. <laughs> Let's take a look at the dailies. Um, I'm going to share my screen. The latency is 5.68 seconds. Now it's 3 seconds. Wow. What are you seeing that at? If you click oh, on the yeah, icon, icon. Yeah, it tells you that it's 4.2 seconds. It, um, oh, it was a lot.
just a line you put on there. It's the wall is unlevel, but it, but it's not. Yours, bro. Um, so the glass of wine, wine is unlevel, and if you try to adjust the wall, you're going to mess up your wall. You're going to mess up the foundation of what it is that you're you're trying oh, to do. Oh, now it's yellow again. Okay. Fair. Um. So yesterday was That's a real great. prime example. I have people come to me all the time. Oh, I mastered. In, in, let's go take a look because nothing's going on right this second here. Okay. Uh, <laughs> let's take a look at this here. So yesterday was a, a prime example of when a, a trader would come to me and say, I got this figured out. I made a lot of money yesterday. And right. If you had it figured out, you made a lot of money yesterday and you're an intermediate trader, you're probably messing up your trading. You weren't, uh, during that two hour period of time, at least that we were on, uh, we didn't receive an appropriate signal. You weren't supposed to make money, right? And to give you an example, to give you an example, the AI, the, the AI project right now, I was talking to, um, someone yesterday, and from January 1st till now, okay, made 300% plus on the studies, okay, 300% plus on the studies, but yesterday, they lost money, okay, and that is because yesterday is the unusual and if you adjust your trades to account for the unusual, you're going to mess up the usual. Okay? And you want to trade what usually happens or what's usually the case. So yesterday there was a particular scenario that was unusual. And if you adjust your trading to be successful in that unusual circumstance, you'll mess up your trading in all the other usual circumstances. But it is very hard to sit and look at day like yesterday again. and let it go by. Or not or wonder why you're not successful because you didn't make it work. I'm gonna make it work. Right? So just always keep that in mind. Um, when you take a look at a day like yesterday. Now I made money yesterday out of trading. Um, and that was okay. Um it was quite all right that I made money yesterday trading. There was one circumstance that you could be in yesterday to make money, right? One circumstance. And that is if the signal would have happened in the very beginning, um, and it was, it was time, it was time to spray. And then that's the one circumstance. Okay. Other than that, you can't, you know, anticipate, can't really anticipate the market. And you should. <clears throat> okay? So, there you go. Um, right now, believe it or not, if the, if the price came up to, well, actually, the, the moving average, uh, if the price came up right now to 28.15, you'd want to take a long trade. Okay. Um, and then we wouldn't know our exit point. Uh, this is not based on the D123 trade. This is based on a theory of where you would, or a, or a theory of, of, of how you would trade if you were maximizing the majority of what normally happens. Um, right now what the chart tells me is if it comes up to this price right here, I would then want to get out around this price right here. You know, well, the one, uh, about yeah, a two point no spread, one and a half to two point spread is what we have in terms of the right now. <clears throat> And I don't teach trading. I mean, it's better, but 
<coughs> turns from yellow to green. Trading all the time. Signals, you may get some trades that are like that. It's green now. But it's not enough profit. Um, you know, there's not enough profit there for you to take advantage of what it is you need to, to take advantage of. Um, right now we have a green ball. A green ball just came in. Okay. Um, and that's the reason why I just I told you that a while ago. Because if a green ball comes in, this would be a good trade if the price is somewhere in here. If it's too much past that, mm, it's too much. And I'm using something else uh, for the cloudy stops than what I normally teach you guys. Um, but you'll have more losses in a row, and you may have wipeout days, but not very many of them. But you'll have many other days that are pretty darn profitable. Okay. So, so just keep in mind that yesterday, if you had yesterday mastered, um, be very, very careful because that's not the majority of your days. That's the, that's the least of your days. Okay. All right. Um, let's What about the green ball at 12.25 uh, p.m.? Yeah, that's a great green ball. <clears throat> I think we agreed on that yesterday. I'm not, I'm not sure. Um, the only thing that was wrong with that green ball at all. But let's take a look at that the price action in, in Monday morning quarterback here. Uh, Wednesday morning quarterback, okay? Um, from the last green ball, which was a turnaround, this turnaround happened, um, and your entry point back in was pretty close to 50%. The turn, because there's not a lot of room here, um, the now remember, it's a two-point scale too, okay? Um, because there's not a lot of room there, it appears that the pullback might have been a little more than you wanted if you're measuring it. If you're measuring it from here, okay? And you got like a 75% pullback, but the entry point was was pretty nice actually. If you're measuring it from this price action, going all the way to here, then to say, well, it didn't pull back enough. I would have liked to see it pull back a little more. Um, and if I missed the trade, I missed the trade. If I don't, I don't. If I'm trading 20 contracts, then what I might do is say, well, um, let me reduce that trade down to 10 contracts. And then I can manipulate my contracts. You don't have the opportunity to do that when you're trading one or two contracts. So, because you're not at that level yet to, to make those kinds of decisions. So, when you're at 20 contracts, they will just take 10. Um, or maybe five contracts. Go ahead and go ahead and take that trade. If I trade five contracts, I know that if it comes down, I can dollar cost average to get in a better price. Because I'm still assuming that the price is going up. So, I give myself some room to get in at five contracts. If I get in at five contracts and I lose the trade and I dollar cost average, I'll probably lose one full trade at 15 contracts, not, not um, one full trade at 20. So I've actually lost less money by dollar cost average, but I have to be able to afford it and bet um, uh, on the fact that the, 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 the trend is continuing to continue up. And that, and that, yeah. You don't get wrong. And uh, yeah, this is this is a, a spot that I got a few texts on and in chat that we talked to that you had talked about that you wanted to see more retracement because if you were measuring from that lower point because your stop was cloudy and because it could still retrace to fifty percent. And I think there were some questions in chat yesterday about why is that stop cloudy? Mm -hmm. Well, because it could still retrace more. And your cloudy stop is right in an ideal retracement level of 50%. Exactly. 
Exactly. Um, you know, so it depends on your perspective. Um, let me take a look at this right here. Yeah. So if you're okay, so there, there are two things. You have to look at things in the entire. You have to look at things in the entire scope of what's going on, right? You got to look at things in the entire scope. If you're too worried about the answer to that question, then you're too worried. Okay. Um, we can sit and analyze it all day long. So the cow comes, cows come home. They're, they're not home yet. No, the cows aren't home yet. Uh, but we could analyze this until the cows come home and you still won't have the answer you're looking for, which is why am I sitting here watching this price shoot up and I'm not in yet? If you took it, you made a good decision. Oops, wrong one. Um, let me erase that. If you took it, you made it. If you took this trade right here, you made a good decision. If you didn't take it, you made a good decision. Okay? That's just how it goes. Those of you who are visiting, you will understand that concept. Um, it's counterintuitive and goes against everything that you've ever been taught in your life. Uh, that, that's why you're a losing trader at this point. <laughs> so, because you've been doing things you've been taught your whole life. Um, and you don't know why that is. Okay? Most people. Um, if you do, congratulations. You're one, one of the very, very few. All right. So, um, let me talk about this. If, if you... And maybe Rob's still on the line, on the line maybe not. You're always analyzing for cloudy stop. You're analyzing previous action. Okay? What's the previous action? Well, if I'm looking at something that came up, I'm looking at something that came down, I'm looking at something that came up, each one of these little legs is, is um, action. Okay? And if I want to know previous action, I look at the same action um, that, when I say previous action, I could be talking about this leg, or that leg, or that leg, or that leg, right? Right along this, just right along this plane. If the price is going up, and I say, I'm, like I look at this price right here, what's the previous action? Now, there it is. Then there's there's no other previous action that met at that spot. Just previous action where I run into. Now, which one of these legs constitutes previous action in the same direction? Right? Well, here we go. Like the like this. Okay. So if I'm right here, the prices are going up. This is previous action, but it's in opposite direction. This would be the previous action in the same direction. This be the previous action in the same direction. Okay? Now, keep that in mind. Whenever I'm looking at any point along the along the lines here, there is a little signal. There's, there's something I can look for. Uh, it's not if it's there, it means there's previous action. There's a, right? If it's not there, it doesn't mean there's not previous action. Okay? So, if I'm looking at um, this right here, okay? Where's the last time things went up? The last previous action. It's actually right here. So that's the last one that went up. You say, well, not really. It's, it's there or it's here. Okay? But actually, there, a little line right there is the last thing that went up. You're looking at this. This is the last one. How do I know that? There's a ball there. What does a ball mean? A ball means turn around and went the other direction. It could have went the other direction for a quarter of a point, it could have went for 20 points. Doesn't matter. It turned around and went the other direction. That is a leg. That right there, my friends, is a leg. Is it significant? May or may not be. You gotta look at it in the big picture. That is a leg. Uh, your turnaround 
uh, points, your, your turnaround balls are legs. So make no mistake about it. So if I'm taking a trade and I'm looking at this trade um, right here, I'm looking at this one, right? I say, where's my last, so where's my last leg? Is my last leg from here to here, which is A, or is my last leg from here to here? Well, uh, so let's put this at the same spot. Which is it? A or B? Which is the, actually the last leg? A or B? I want you to guys write A or B, which is the last leg? Just put A or B. Most people are saying B. Some people are saying A. Clear in that point is a leg, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> both so those of you who said A, I just told you two minutes ago. From ball to point, uh, thanks, because I wanted to trick you, right? That um, B is actually your last leg. I don't know now, so do I. So if I consider right. this leg and I look at this, <laughs> I got to trade all day long, all day long, every day. If I look at this from here to here, then it may not have retraced enough. Very hefty. And so I might hesitate and say I want more retracement. The good, the, what makes that a great decision is if it does retrace, I get a fantastic discount, fantastic headroom, and fantastic stop. Right? If I don't get in, I just don't get in. I just miss it. And making money is about managing headroom based on the daily chart. Wait, so how did you do that? The price. Yeah. I got it down to seven seconds. Wow. In the really big picture. And then in the medium picture, let's go back here and take a look. But it's got a small <coughs> order. I just haven't gotten yeah. around to it because it's, it's ugly. four inch and there's a three inch, so we right. take it down. Uh, in the medium range picture, we have great headroom, so or the short not, range picture, we have great something. headroom. From the opening bell, okay, uh, right to here, we have great headroom. Um, yeah. Now, what's been happening so since uh, 7 o'clock in the morning, morning is yeah. we kind of went down into yeah. this uh, or, or consolidated. Wow. Region. Right here. It's saying that, you know, is the price going to go down? Is the price going to go up? We don't know. One um, shot. <laughs> I was yeah, I was going to do a couple of places. Uh, and there's um, plenty of North Georgia. It's going to go down. Is the price going to go up? And uh, yeah, I think we had a good farm for a hundred dollars for a personal. And decided to kill it. Succession. But if I were to take a trade right now, um, I would have to say that um, oh, well, while Wally Kazawi, you are in a wonderful spot to um, have a long trade. This is a beautiful, beautiful spot to take a long trade. But it doesn't well, well, that's the thing that so don't put uh, headroom, lots of headroom. No cloudy you know, stop. One of the things was I got out stop. of trades too early. Uh, very little bit of a cloudy stop. And now I'm getting out of trades no. too late. So I've got to be yeah. fine tuned that difference. Very big. Very And what goes into that is committing <coughs> to a plan before. Because Buddha could tell you many things. Yeah. Because that's what, just, once again, pisses me off that 
Right. I was going to set my stops at 28, 21. That would have given me five points. So I let it go. I'm going to watch them. It'll write this. Right. All it did was scream. See, it is good to have that behavior, but when you're not you're set in a bracket. You were, you said you were going to think it. I'm not going to do a regular G4S3 trade. Well, I was I'm thinking not. about putting a stop um, in at 400. I'm, I'm, you know what? I'm going to set it up for G4S3 trade. I've never seen it. Then I'm going to change. So you put the stop in before the game? Or the game? I didn't do anything. <laughs> oh, it's like usually. <laughs> Usually, oh. you put it with the first game you stop. Maybe I should so, that. pay attention to turnarounds. That's your tip of the day. Wow, first 15 minutes, you get a great tip of the day. Pay attention to turnarounds. They tell you when your last leg was. That's what they do, right? You ever thought of it that way? <coughs> you guys ever think of it that way? No. Probably not. See it every day, right? Does that make sense? Anybody learn anything just now? Uh, no. You changed my life. That's what he wants to hear. Yeah, thank you very much for noticing. Yeah, a lot of things are a lot better. A lot of things are a lot better. Been pretty aggressive. All right. So he's saying. So now you can't, but you can't like add that to. Turn around. To your team. You can't add that to like a set of rules. It just has to be something that. Because I see you, you, you look at and you, you just. You a just blue kind of ball see. here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. All right. We're talking guns and just the whole lesson. <laughs> right. The whole thing. Right, just, so uh, just a bit of a holding pattern. Oh, I love how heavy it is. Well, that was the other thing. Yeah, uh, if you're looking at your, um, if you're looking at your um, uh, moving averages and they're a little bit different than mine, uh, that's because that my perspective is different. Someone's coming at you. Don't worry about it. Okay. Right. Uh, good morning, everybody. We just had the opportunity there for a little to talk about uh, a couple of things. Um, I yeah, probably have some visitors on today. Do so I have any, uh, now listen closely to my questions before you answer them. Uh, do I have any visitors that were on yesterday? It was plastic composite, and the idea was it was lighter, so soldiers would carry it further. Okay. So my was a marine. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, For whatever reason. So now that you've had a little bit of time to see yesterday and overnight to kind of think about it a little bit. Uh, what were you thinking about, uh, what did you think about what you saw yesterday? Uh, something specifically, uh, what did you, what did you like? What, what did you like about yesterday? What was, Yes, my I don't know if and we do it every day. We do this about six hours a day. I'm getting ready to go to another. 
uh, after the session yesterday, I had a, right a meeting of with my members yeah. talking about possibly doing one, an nine, other two hour session or two one hour sessions specifically for visitors. Well, I think it, it um, would have been I mean, and I'm for people who are wanting to analyze trade. Um, yeah, to, to trade analysis. So, uh, so we discussed that yesterday. In fact, we got a couple of phone calls or, um, from some reps and things saying that they had some comments. Yeah, uh, they they take care of company. Actually, they had a higher high, but yeah, why not? pretty big retracement. What kind of company we are? You know, I mean, <clears throat> this is not so a big now, company. What I'm saying is, the good, the bad, the ugly. had I won the 200 and got you in like don't. here somewhere, there's, there's in that environment that we're pretty transparent. You know, I didn't there's take it here. Talk about, you know, uh, that would now be the question is, but, since um, I missed it there, would our, I our, take yeah, it here? Yeah, probably on that, or our, <laughs> our, our like, normal range on that is, is pretty large. It's just a lot of things that you won't see other companies discuss. And I think it's important. It's important for people to understand some of the inner workings of what goes on behind a successful trading group. Because yeah, there was a lot of I can count the number around. of successful trading groups I know on one hand. That's, you know, <coughs> okay. Down, it's like and uh, the three best, I can count on three fingers. Learning to fly. Yes, of course. So not yeah, one. You, you know, we get some here deep in there. Then realize. Oh, um, yeah, so, so that's that. kind of the way that it, it's the way that it is. Yeah. I'm thinking that's what I'm doing here. I'm um, trying to pass some of those fearful items. So what's happening right now is our pricing is going down. We received the blue ball here. And if you're a visitor, you should have received, um, well, you should have, three things should have happened already. You should be pretty if you're not, you got the issues. For that. This thing is um, much of my memory. One of the things that should have happened is you received an invite. And you, uh, actually, what the first thing that should have happened uh, is you either got your invitation or your representative called you. And you should have answered your phone to your representative. If you're a person that can't pick up your damn phone, talk to your representative, I don't need you. And that's the beautiful thing about um, this is I'm so busy, but I'm just that once. It's Sorry. Uh, uh, you, you, you're on my time frame now. Because what I see okay. is, is I told you to be successful. Uh, you need to listen to the people who are on the set. And they've got the um, tips or and whatever. And, and, and you know, they're making communicate. If you can't communicate, like you're going to have a problem. Doing the penny and there's an old Jewish saying that says things will start. Or, Things will end the way they well, begin. And if you begin your training that, career yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're not willing right. to communicate, <laughs> you're trying to communicate on your terms. Um, I understand you can't take every call every time, everywhere, those kinds of things. But you can call back and you can text back and you can communicate appropriately like an adult. If you can't communicate like an adult and you want to communicate like a child, um, then uh, trading isn't for you. You're going to get the results that it's well. Actually, you probably won't even get the results as good as a child because you have a mindset that uh, is not a winning mindset. So, number one, you got to communicate. So, I stress communication. <laughs> okay? Picking up the phone, stop talking, stuff like that. I realize, I realize that if you make an appointment on Saturday, you know, Saturday comes along and you made the appointment at night, and you're gone all day Sunday and you come in Monday, or if you make an appointment Sunday and you come in Monday and you haven't talked to your representative yet, there might be an excuse there. There might be a reason. But if you made an appointment Saturday and you're in, you're in session today and you haven't really had an a, a in-depth discussion with your representative yet about receiving your um, <coughs> invite and the expectations and, and, and your training ladder and the video you're supposed to watch before you got here, and you got a serious problem. There's no excuse for that. I don't take excuses from that in my rest. Okay? I tell them, well, if they didn't call you back, you must not have made a very good impression. Okay? And so they're always getting in trouble. They're like, they, they, that, that, that person didn't call me back. No, and you didn't make a very big impression on them the first time. It's your fault. But the, the, the real fact of the matter is, 
Uh, people these days, they, they want to communicate. They, they think it's Burger King and they want everything their, their way. And then they wonder why they're not successful. Because they listen to unsuccessful people and they don't communicate with people that should be communicating. Well, it's still, it's that simple. You know, and I make no bones about it. Gun is uh, I'm not here to argue. I'm here to just, that's our perspective. And so one of the things you can have if you're if you're a a, a, a member or a visitor is you should have this rule sheet, and uh, you should already know a little bit about what that rule sheet is for. You can talk to your representative. If you haven't, you got a problem because I'm pretty sure the representative has been trying to get the mission is going to communicate. That's number one. So things that should have happened: communication established, right? This is a for real company. This is a slap you upside your head, wake up call to life and success. It's a real company. We show it to you. We don't just tell you about it. We show it to you. And we're showing it to you. Yeah, people who were here yesterday, they've seen it. Amazing stuff that you're going to learn. You don't communicate? Hey, you miss those opportunities. Okay. Rule sheet. This rule sheet tells us that we have two turnaround signals. I talked about them a little bit earlier. One of them is a long signal and one of them is a short signal. The green ball means we're going to buy, the blue ball means we're going to sell. Now we had a signal came on right here that said we're going to sell. Had we sold, we would have just made a lot of money. But we didn't sell. And the reason we didn't sell is because the probability of this coming up and us losing money was too high. How do we know that probability is too high? Well, um, federal disclaimer, we're not your financial advisors. We're not giving you financial advice. We are teaching you a skill set that you learn to manage your own risk with. And uh, trading is very risky. You lose all your money. Uh, okay. Be very, very careful in trading. All the fundamental risk management rules to keep yourself as safe as possible. Nothing is risk free in life. Everything you do. Yeah. In fact, one of the most risky oh, things you do so. is to drive to your job. It's pretty it's risky. Powerful. People get killed driving to work. You ride your bicycle to work, your health net. That's why it's even riskier. If you don't believe me, work in a metropolitan in ER for a couple of weeks. And, uh, Check it out for yourself. You get away with it your whole life. Right? But it's risky. And they make them. <laughs> um, trading is probably, it's probably not that risky because you won't lose your life. Right? Uh, but your money is at risk. So treat it as if you were you know, driving a bike back to work. Very serious. Really so once we receive a ball, we evaluate that ball by four things. Trends, tradesmen, body stock, and room for profit. We're going to be talking about those things today, but you're not going to know everything about all those things. That's what, what you learn in the academy. And that's but what you learn where the Trends, tradesmen, body stock, profit. Trends, tradesmen, body stock, profit. Yes. Uh, think of this as a torch. We're going to torch the trading. Right? Trend, retracement, and real profit. Those four things. Over and over and over. That's how we evaluate the trade. So, uh, we see a green ball or a blue ball. In this case, we saw a blue ball. And we would take the trade here. And it would have went really, really well. Right. And we say a trend retracement by stock header. Well, the trend was uh, okay. The trend is the trend's all right. Half smile. Retracement. There was no retracement. Zero retracement. It was at the bottom of the mark. Uh, cloudy stop. I guess no. Is it bond? A hellacious cloudy stop. This was a bad cloudy stop. It's not automatic. Bad. Bomb helps it. Yeah, Very bad. Headroom for profit. Since there was no retracement, the client stops bad. Channels are there was no headroom for profit. There was no headroom for profit. On that trade, this was a maybe a 50-50 trade at best. 
the we don't want to name just the stick trades. We want to name trades a little bit because we want, because we want our performance to that much money. We plus or minus three. Yeah. So if we take a 52 percent at the rate, right, and, and we get uh, 49 percent to 55 percent, yeah. it's magic. If I win 48, 49 percent of my trades, I'm making buku bucks. And so we want to win. We want to win between 50 and 60 percent of our trades. That's our target. In order to do that, we need to take higher value trades, which are would be 55% trade or better, okay, in the way that we evaluate them. And that's it. So every ball we see, we evaluate the trade. Everything we do, we evaluate it. That's how we control it. Okay. Now, what would be nice is if this price came up a little more, turned around, and gave us a ball, and then, uh, it, and then we have some headroom. Um, let's talk about the headroom just a little bit. If you're a visitor, what is headroom? Now, when we took this ball earlier, nothing from Abel. All we could see was this. Say to him. This is all we could see at that time. Right? That's all we could see. Um, we would have taken the trade right here. Notice the price has never been down here. So there's no headroom for pricing. Right? There's no headroom. There's, there's the price hadn't been that low yet today. So there's, there's no room for profit. Okay. The stop, we're going to set our stops, and you'll understand this when I do it, at three. So one, two, three. You'll notice that our stop is right at about 50 50 mark, you know, and it's right here where the price kept going to. So it's very high, it was highly likely that the price would come up and, and knock us out. So the cloudy stop was bad, right? The trend is okay. The trend's blue. The balls, the, the candlestick's blue. The trend is okay. There's no retracement. What's a retracement? Well, when the price goes down and it pulls back, that's a retracement. A retracement provides you with headroom and it makes your cloudy stop a little better. Right, but since there was no retracement, there was no headroom, and I can confirm there's no retracement because there's no headroom. The cloudy stop is bad. So that means there's no retracement, which means you did, and a retracement equals discount. There's no discount, so we don't take the trade. So that blue ball was no good. As it turns out, had we taken that blue ball, one, two, three, four, we would have made four points rather quickly, and we would have been happy. But we would have taken a um, subordinate kind of a trade. The trade is not as good as it could be. So we want to take better trade. So if you're a visitor, that all sounds complicated, but you've got to just you've got to understand. This takes most people ten years to learn. We teach it to you in a couple of weeks. I just explained everything you do in just five ten minutes. Okay, this one sheet of paper. Is our million dollar worksheet, it tells you everything you need to know about the style of trading that we do. Okay? So, yeah, you don't understand it, but you've got to understand something. Wake up. I just explained everything in 10 minutes. <coughs> Maybe 15 minutes. How long it took? Uh, I looked a while ago. It was less than 15 minutes. And I even had some interludes in there, and some choruses, and little side comments. <clears throat> but I can explain to you how to trade very easily, uh, and you can just take it to the bank. Um, how do you trade? You look for discounts. How do you find discounts? You look for the direction of the trend. You look for the retracement, which is a discount. You make sure your cloudy stop is clear, and you make sure you have headroom for profit. There you go. That's trading. So I just explained that like like 15 seconds. Second, not minutes. Second. Okay. Very simple. Um, uh, implementing it is difficult because your mind wants to tell you what it wants to tell you because it's been doing that for decades. And so that's, why that that's why I enforce communication. My notes. You gotta understand where you're going. You gotta understand what it is you would be decision making tactics are. And then I have to have to. There's a group. When I say I, I'm talking about the group. Then you have to work together to change the way that you view 
um, oh, yeah. business and money in there under mind power. market acceleration and market acceleration. Uh, so that you always do the right thing. I guarantee you, if I gave you a program, and I guarantee you, if I gave you a program that made you 500% on your money, now listen to me, because this, this is insanely stupid, okay? But this is what happens. And you won't believe me, but believe me. If you don't believe me, we'll, we'll, I don't know if Rob can get on the mic, but <clears throat> I can give you a trade signal where you make 500% on your money every year. 500%. Your friends, the smartest ones you know, are making 10 to 20% on your money. They have their money spread out, really full investment. You know, they're working, you know, right? They're making 20%. You're making 500% of your money. I can give you that. And yesterday, you would have been crying your eyes out because you would have lost some money on a day that went so good, and you'd be like, what's wrong, what's wrong, what's wrong? <laughs> okay? Serious. Sounds stupid. Especially since, you know, if you're like you're brand new and you didn't see yesterday. But if you would have done, if you would have been doing the things you were supposed to do, um, yeah, so <laughs> that trade thing, signal, was, you would have lost the other now. reason I stayed If you would have taken it, a trade yesterday, I was thinking it was, according but, to, you know, well, this was normal really signal, the first drive, you second drive, I should have realized right? it was the third You might drive. not have taken the trade, so you might have just sat and watched the day go by. You're quarterbacking. Sat at that. Oh, I got it. And then I have yeah, somebody come on and say, hey, okay, play so today they go, hey, what do you think about that trade yeah, back Jose, there? Jose, at Pedro. Pedro. What do you think about that trade? I'm talking about the psychology now. What do you think about that trade right here? I took it. I made good money. I took it. I made money. What do you think about it? I think it, yeah. it, it was a good decision. I think it was a good decision. Not just one um, vote. If you're thinking about it too much, you're thinking about it too much. If you took it, made money. Pat yourself on the back. You made a good so, decision. Let's see, I because your ability to discern that, in other words, discern this from this, from which one to take and where, is less than the ability of the market. Now, members, listen up. Less than the ability of the market, right, and your money management to make money. So, your ability to discern if that was really a good trade or not is less than the result of the market and your your money management take care of it. In fact, uh, don't miss Rob's session tonight. Okay, don't miss it. Uh, he's gonna be doing some playback stuff for you guys, a little, little bit of playback homework. Uh, <coughs> which, and he's probably gonna have a visitor on there. Keep in mind that this visitor that he's gonna have was doing this exercise for a far different reason than what you were doing the exercise for. Hey, Doc. Okay. The reason he's going to be on next week when we have the result. Folks. Okay, on next week. Okay. Okay, let me. Okay. Next yeah. week. Um, so, Rob, hang on just a second there, if you would. Uh, so, uh, it's a great exercise to cover some things when you cover the results because you're going to have results that fit into about two or three different categories, right? And when you have, when he does have the guest on, her reason for her reason and the way she was doing it is different than what you're doing, and her reason was a very specific reason. So the results are going to be different. Uh, though some of you will fit into that category, and um, and that'll help identify a few things. Um, and she's doing it live, um, live simulated where you're doing a playback. A little different um, in in focus and stuff. But there are some super lessons to learn. Now, Rob, oh, the last am I right down. or am I, or am I <laughs> full of uh, you know why? Um, if I were to give somebody, they were making 500% of their money and they lost money yesterday, would they not be crying in their suit? 100% crying in their suit. 100% that they would be crying because they felt like, I missed out on all this money when they're talking to 500%. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In their mind, it's, it's, it's the stupidest thing you ever witnessed in your life. Unless you don't. And here's the deal: we're all guilty of it. But if you, okay, if you, do, you know, if they would be you just crying their eyes out that I missed out yeah. on that money. Either they missed out well, on the money, or they got in and it lost them their daily living. Because night. on uh, the automated trading yesterday, you would lose your daily living, and you'd be done. 
Uh, nice one tray, boom, done, out of here. And you look at that go, how the hell did that happen? Doesn't matter how that happened. And that is because when you do things that happen most of the time, and you focus on what happens most of the time, then you're making money most of the time. If you change what you do most of the time, and change it so you make money during this, and, and this doesn't happen very often, then you're making money in half the time. Now, I'm not talking about our delta trading signal. I'm just talking about the principle that no matter what I give you, and get you're going to want to shoot yourself in the foot because you can't help yourself. And you you're going to get a juicy day like I'm saying, I either stayed out or I lost money just on that it. signal. Yeah. It's Nothing not optimized on days like yesterday. You know, why it's you optimized on days that normally you don't happen. Mm -hmm. And the signal would be yes. about a... Oh. <sighs> yesterday, mm, maybe a 50% oh, signal, which means 50% of yesterday is going to be the day only, or you'll have lost but, your bankroll. Yeah. Now, when I say lost your bankroll, I'm talking about your daily limit, not your whole account. Yeah. Because your daily limit is a small you portion you of your whole say? account. It's all, all based on money say? management. All your success is going to be based yeah. on money management, not I've got a life too. predicting a signal. Speaking of predicting a signal, let's get back yeah, to our day. Um, um, but Rob, am I not? Yeah, am I not correct? Be they change week, things that, that don't need to be changed. Oh, be uh, we yeah. we we, want, we so change things to fit our narrative. Okay. You know what we what we want to happen. So you know we're trying to find a balance in our brain between winning and losing and having it be equal. And we just were so so geared up on winning all the time, and you know that balance. It's a hard part yeah, to find. It was like a interpretation of it is. Saying, oh, I'm gonna, oh, man, I just so waited so just a little time. I'm going to take a short trade right now. Okay. Oh, it would be good to have okay. on. And then uh, like I wanted to demonstrate a long trade first today, but it's just not giving me the opportunity. So, visitors, let me thanks so much, Rob. I just wanted to come up here for what I'm saying. Because I'm going to be asking, I'm going to be talking to people. Remind me about volunteers here later on. Okay. Lose. I don't so, know what you do, and then I, what Rob's going to tell them, which just took a trade. Go against the EMA. So uh, this is what we call a short trade. There's two ways of making money, and I'm going to show you what these two ways of making money are, or two ways of taking trades. Actually, of making money. There are two ways of making money. Number one, when the market goes up, right? This is where we buy low. Why? You know, I need somebody. We make money. You've heard it. Your whole life. Buy low is so high. The other way, we call this a long trade. I don't understand it. And we call this a long trade. And they call it a long trade because reasoning. Otherwise, okay. Now, here's a funny thing. The terminology in the market has been around for a long, long time. Been around longer than some of us have lived. <laughs> and the terminology in the market describes to you, gives you hints about the way the market works. We call it a long trade because people are in for it in, in it for the they're in it for the long haul. I'm in this for the long haul. The market's gonna go up in the long haul. That's what it's designed to do. Well but what is the conclusion? In the short term, it could Come down on you and and uh, correct a little bit. So if we can also make money when the market is going down. This is where we sell high and buy low. We sell it first. We enter into a contract and we sell something. And then we buy it back low. This is called a short trade. Is Why is it called long and short? Because the market always goes up in the long term, right? You know, a, a company is designed for it, its pricing to go up in the long term. So we go long. We, we have a long-term patient vision about the market. So this, this is where we come to the conclusion. But isn't it? we want, also want to give impatient people the opportunity to three main play that I in a little short-term movement. The short-term movements are called retracements. Um, so, so we can make money both ways. Um, if you know, uh, well, I'm not 
see this trade here? Let me move this to the side because I want to talk about this trade. I thought I would have more time here. I took this uh, short trade. The price went down. I was in the profit. Now the price went up, and now I'm losing money. So my target down here is four points profit, and I'm risking three points stop up. So I'm going to try to show you before I get knocked out. So I got in at 103.50. I count three. One, two, three. This is where my stop is located. If it hits that stop, I lose my trade. My profit is located down here. One, two, three, four. If it comes down here, I make four points. Right? So I sold, and it tells you right down here. I sold one contract at this price. It was like I want it to go down so I can buy it back at a lower price. I sell high and then buy low. Well, that's a short trade. That's for short term yeah. thinkers. Usually, so, so if you, you know Warren Buffett and you learn how he makes oh, money, primarily he's always he does value buys. What does it mean? That's he buys companies at discount and he holds yeah. them for the long term. If you had a and adds value so to it. Now, like I, I might lose this trade. What? If price is going up, you would go in the opposite direction. And it's going to hit my mark right here, or which is my stop, and I'm going to get out at negative three points. I'm going to lose 150 dollars. We'll talk about what points are in a little bit. Okay. But it's going to go up here and hit my stop. So it seemed like Piggy was and, uh, your primary. I don't like that. Your primary motivator. Rob, if you're still on, do you think the market's going to go down a little more, retrace a little more, or do you think the market's going to go up? What do you think? Well, it's going to retrace a little more. But when I saw it, it wasn't like I was against it every time. It's going to retrace a little more. Yeah. You know what, though? We had a nice rejection on the candlestick product. So, you know, but we've had rejection the last four candlesticks. So, you know, I'm at a point right here where I'm not sure. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I'm not here to try and predict what I think is going to happen. I'm just watching the charts and trading what I see. And the reason I was the reason I was going to ask you is I was going to see if I should bring my stop up more than dollar cost average, based on the fact that it'll probably come back down more. Are you going to try uh, to do that? But you know what? I, I, I narrowly escaped that exercise. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was. If you sure. didn't answer me, I was getting ready to move the stop to give me some time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay so. Okay, so there's my stop. So if it goes I'm up and hits my stop, I lose the trade. Now, I took this trade here so that I could demonstrate to the visitors, not because it was a good trade, okay? Um, <laughs> so, uh, so two ways of making money. When the market goes up, we buy low, we sell high. When the market goes down, like right here, we're selling high, and then we're going to buy back low. Home short term. <clears> but for my, my members, uh, always keep that in mind. When you're in a short trade, you're trading retracement. You're, you're trading the retracement of the market, first of all. That puts you at a disadvantage. Well, I'm so short traders right do not do as well as long traders. That's why I try to keep you in a long buy now. now I can make money I like a bandit. I mean, the market can yeah. be going up, and I can make money. <laughs> it's like the 11 o'clock right? trade. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me because I, I utilize lose. money management right. to make me money. That is not for us, my and trade. And I don't care what your reason okay. is, just lose <clears throat> So if you're a visitor, notice that this, this is red right down here, <clears throat> right? So the price is above where I got in. <clears throat> so if I were to sell, I don't have a ball though. You only do is settle the trade, yeah, oh, settling the trade, or rounding out your trade, round trip, or whatever right. you want to call it. So you buy and then you sell, or you. Sell. So you'll have to buy. put these parameters. So right. one uh, parameters are the top with, with a ball. With a ball, we do, and, and we and see the green ball. And this bottom way, we do when we see a blue ball, or some people use red balls. And can you think of any so other guidelines? Yeah, green ball for into long trade, long term vision thinking, and short term vision four thinking. Now, is, we're going to be thinking there was another one with a ball, end of five so minutes, you can't ball, modify lose. Apply, but yeah, lose. You really can't modify, you have to wait until it either goes to minus three. And minus so in this case right here, uh, no moving, no moving mark. Or didn't have it. Didn't stop. have this down. Had a bad body stop. Okay, no modifying. Yeah, because of it. it did go down, by the way. Then it came back up against me. <coughs> That's always going to put you in a bad position. <coughs> Excuse me. You're going to see me to be in those bad positions all the time. So it's all right if I take this one 
I think if this if I took this one long, I would lose. Okay. Key with this trade is the position that he took when he took the trade. He had no discount. The stock was cloudy, and he had no headroom for profit. So this is a trade that you know. Hey, I almost would expect this to be knocked out of with a three point stop. Hey, awesome. Very yeah. 50% of the time. And the very interesting thing is, if I would have taken that Were trade, you torching them or? At the, it was taking it. Uh, okay, so it actually was taking it. Uh, I thought it was taking it to fifty. It was taking actually two or three. Uh, no. But uh, you you could torch them. What the heck is this? Yeah. But I wasn't. 2803. I tell you, 2803. Like, uh, no, it wouldn't have lost. It wouldn't have lost. But, um, uh, I would sit there. But I would be, I, I would be, uh, I would be, be over my right shoulder, right foot so. And but I wouldn't have won yet. Okay, so you didn't take this because it okay? was flat. So it was just one of those no man land right. kind of a uh, kind of deal. And it doesn't mean that the price isn't going to come back down. It just means I didn't give myself enough room for profit. Okay. I didn't want to overextend this one, even though I could on this ladder, I could afford it. Yeah. Um, hey, Doc, that was a perfect example of, of you saying, you know, the only reason for being knocked out of a trade is having your soft set too close. Also, another you know, parameter. You would have your stop, uh, stop up a little higher. You know, at a five point stop, yeah, you know, you might, might have been in a little better shape, giving yourself a better percentage to win the trade. But your stop was so close, it was extremely cloudy. Yeah. And I'm going to take a trade on the green ball right now, or I could do what I want to. I don't know. I don't think we're established that the price is going back up yet. But uh, one of the things that I can do is, um, um, you know, see, we have a green ball here. We do have some headroom, but we still have kind of a bad cloudy, cloudy stop, and we're really not establishing an upward trend yet. But I do like, I would like, uh, I do kind of like that position. So I'm going to put in a market order. Maybe, well, maybe not even a market order. Maybe I'll just trade one. Um, I really want to show No. <laughs> but I'm uh, not really happy with the position here. I'll wait, I'll wait for it to go up in a, in a discount um, so that we can take it at a more appropriate time. Okay. All right. So there we go. So there's two ways of making money. When the market goes up, the market goes down. Uh, consequently, there's two ways of losing money. When the market goes up, and when the market goes down. I just lost money when the market went up because I took a short trade. Uh, short term thinking, right? So that's why they call it long and short because you know the long of it is you buy it and you hold it. In the meantime, I can make money when the market's coming down. <laughs> okay, so shorting trades. There are some investors who say never short trades. Never, never, never. They never do ever. And uh, to talk to Warren Buffett, he's not about short in any kind of market. He, he does. He holds different positions. Um, and we, we can talk about something called hedging. Okay. Um, or the hedge. Right. Uh, now look at this market. Shoot back up. Okay. There we go. Hedging is... Uh, let me do it. Let me actually, let me do this as a lesson today. I haven't given a hedging lesson in God, maybe two or three years. Maybe we could do a hedging lesson today. Or maybe we could do it tomorrow. Let me take a look at the time. We get to it, I'll do it today. If not, we'll do the hedging lesson tomorrow. Let me tell you why. <clears throat> if I were to ask 100 people <clears throat> to invest anything, what hedging is, right? And how the, the billionaires and millionaires use hedging. Okay, 97 people, 97 percent of the people would get the answer wrong. Want it. They think they know, they don't. And 97 people, when I tell you that, there's 97 out of 100 people thinking right now, oh, I'm one of those few. And guess what? Sorry to disappoint you, Matt. You're not. Okay. <laughs> You're so not. You gain Even of my traders, 100% of people that I ask. Well, my, my impression was. I or 10 will get the answer right. 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 I, don't, I, don't, I still don't <laughs> think I was. Um, and everybody right. else thinks that they know. Okay? Until I explain it to them. Trend oh, down. Never thought of it that way before. Well, I right? When you hear the term hedging, 
all this garbage you've heard your whole life, Tracement and that's the way that it really, really works. Bad. They get it and not what hit you. Oh, you stop it bad because I was in the cloud. Okay. And, never make it and I will you give you. Uh, so, you know, it's probably a 54. I'll give you a, I'll give you an example, and it'll be just a made up example. And the example that I'll give, just so I'll remember, the example will probably be two, um, let me see, <clears throat> great investment opportunity um, on high risk, um, we'll call it high risk, high reward um, investment uh, stock, okay? And we'll, we'll talk about that now. I'll show you how, how hedging actually works. I allude to it and we talk about it really all the time, but to, to put it together, you don't really recognize it as hedging, but it is. And uh, hedging, like I said, if you think you know what it is, you probably don't. <coughs> um, uh, you'll know what it is and you'll know how it's used, but how it's applied, <clears throat> that's a higher order of critical thinking. Remember Bloom's taxonomy, right? Lower level of critical thinking. <clears throat> Let's take a look at it. I'm critical of my thing. Whenever I use the word hedging, I'm going to show you what's happening. What's so happening? You can find your white, is this your white? Yeah, Bloom's yeah. taxonomy. Mm -hmm. Here's Bloom's taxonomy. Make it bigger. Well, it's safe to pay you. Most people that answer the question about hedging, they answer the question down here. And that's knowledge the and comprehension that. level. Well, and I don't perform but they're that. They're clueless on how to apply it. Jeremy, <coughs> they're clueless. They're clueless of how to yeah. analyze it. And after analysis, they're clueless on how to synthesize that and concept within their daily activities. You know, what, do you know what a person? And they certainly, because about? they don't have these skill sets, they certainly don't have the skill sets to what evaluate it. Right? Because they don't understand the application. When actually, it's like kindergarten simple, but until you are exposed to the upper or a higher level of critical thinking, doesn't mean harder, right? I think I get it. That means a more in-depth understanding. That more in-depth understanding can be super, super simple, and it is. And it's very, very simple. But we think we know what it means, but we don't. We'll talk about that later. If I don't get to it today, that's okay. We'll get, we'll get to it. I'll wait for a point here where we're um, waiting on a trade, which we probably will be doing right now. All right. So. Let me, let me throw myself under the bus here. Um, my, what I, okay. I wanted to say what I thought was, but I'll leave it alone. Still do it. Yeah. Uh, no. uh, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. They're all Asian, and they are racist. He's transferring risk H H from H one China. area to another. So you hedge in this scenario, I guess you would take an opposite direction to control your risk in a certain trade. Um, I know that we do it in the crypto world a little bit, you know, you, you and I talked about that a little bit, but um, in this scenario, you'd be taking an opposite direction to control your risk against big losses. So that's how I understand. And then they, they want to wipe everything. They want to make everything. Yeah. Uh, the, the most significant <coughs> part of that for your first statement. Oh, yeah. And then it, and then you went back and kind of explained there, right there, there and put a couple qualifiers on it. Uh, but yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. It's transferring risk to another area. And the key there. is another area. So you said it perfectly the first time. It's transferring risk to another area. So uh, that area, if you're trading the S&P 500, I heard they like right. The way people, there is no other area. Second, transfer your risk, right? Um, your risk is kind of mitigated throughout throughout the market, you know, through five five hundred different companies. So. Um, uh, yes, it's transferring risk to another area. Exactly. So I will give a demonstration on how to apply that um, definition. Because uh, so the definition was spot on. And we'll look at applying that definition. So yes, very good. Yeah. So we'll take a look at applying that definition. Um, because the definition was, was 
He said, if you or you can't make a trade is you get a little bit better of the high stock. You get the chance. The fact of the matter is, the ball went away, so we don't hire people to help. Doesn't look like and that's that the thing. What, what really if, you know? Do what is it that I'm? Uh, so I'm the managing. trade went away, and it looks like it's going to continue to go In up. In my mind, I'm managing the million yes. dollars. There we go. Where I'm at is somewhere between zero and yeah. So and yeah. So, David uh, so is on, a, on a 11 o'clock trade. What is your trade position? I missed it. What's your trade position, David? So, I want the book. To I'm sure you're wrong. That they're going to make a um, million dollars. Yeah, 28.06.25. And that they need help to do. Oh, this is what we learned. This is what we did. Um, I think this is going to be beautiful for you. I think it's going to be beautiful. Good trade. Yeah, good call down there. Uh, hell, you got a green ball right at 11 o'clock. Well, you got a turnaround. Uh, uh, it was beautiful for your trade. I don't want Five to point stop, seven point gain. Perfect trade for you, David. Perfect trade for your decision. Uh, even if you lose that trade, it was still, that was beautiful. Yeah, that would just be like an example. In my opinion, uh, where I would have been. Anybody else on a 10 30 or 11 o'clock trade as well? It wants to share it. My and it takes don't drink it. Really hey, there's no way you can lose this trade, man. You know, <laughs> hey, we're not Yeah, we're, we're not focused <laughs> on this. I lost a thousand bucks. No <laughs> because I'm spreading it across. So, yeah. All right. Obviously, obviously, they can't lose that trade. That's a big part of what you know, said. maybe. 
and forty five percent yeah. shot of losing that trade. That's why it's. Um, he might have a fifty percent shot of losing that trade. Even if he had, a, even if he had a fifty two percent shot of losing the trade. Beautiful trade. Beautiful trade. Uh, because you certainly don't have a fifty five to fifty percent chance of losing that trade. All right. The chances of losing it are not fifty five or sixty percent. So it's a beautiful trade. Um. All right. So. So there we go. In fact, Dave, it's such a good trade. Such a good trade. I would I would move my stock to plus 0.5 personally. Because if it goes down to plus 0.5 on that trade, you're gonna lose it. Right? So he's telling David to move the stock. I would probably that I, I would, you know, if I was did 20 contracts, <coughs> five contracts, that's probably what I would do. I would uh, I'd put my uh, I put my stop at plus point. Yeah, and that applies to even right. athletes if they're going to because it goes down and gets that close to your point. Athletes, they they know know it's a downward trend. If you go to a world class soccer, a good thing. and you, you're you're so far up. I mean, you're way if it, if it retraces that much, you're in trouble. Right, and it'll do it through a flash. It'll be a big blue bar. Boom, and that blue bar is gonna. Heart to go sync with it. So that's what I would do. What's big? And of course, that's what I would do. It would go down, get me out of point five, and shoot up and go up to a point. The best you know that. <laughs> but that's, that's, that's definitely what I would do. Uh, now that you know your way, kind of like I remember Pele pretty far past the losing. It's the same thing. Scenario of uh, learning. Like which way you get going? You know, now it's just numbers and it's confidence. Locker room, building that. Put a towel over it. Lay down actually on the bench. I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try to uh, take a trade here on uh, an entry point. I'm gonna put an entry point here. It comes down here. Um, there you go. I just entered a trade. I entered a long trade. Uh, visitors, not because it's a good trade. Because it's not really a great trade. Uh, but to to show you that we have a, a four point so gain and a three point stop. Ten minutes before and, I decide to trade, and, I should uh, I know taking that trade right here, I also took it on yeah. an even number so that I could do the calculations pretty easy. So I took that trade immediately dumped on me. Okay. Um that's okay. That's what it does most of the time. Now most of the time you'll see me lose two or three trades and then make up for it. That's how trading works. You never know when that is. You never know which trade's going to win, which one's going to lose. But this here illustrates what we call a G4 S3. And we're going for a gain of four and a stop of three. We do that with a very particular amount of money in our bank account. Because we're going to risk it. Maybe a man who we have a the only rule yeah, I think another thing that, that people should realize too when you were just talking about the percentage of being stopped out is on a G7 S5, what's your break even point? It's like you're watching yourself. Exactly. What is the break even point on a G7 S5? I know what it is, but what other folks in here, I mean, Doc gave us the math, Papa, uh, you know, to be able to calculate it, what it is. What is your break even point? That gives you more confidence when you take the trade and you lose a few in a row. You know, hey, I'm going to lose a few in a row. But I know over a sample size, I'll, I'll, if my break even point is a certain percentage, I'm going to be highly profitable. Close, Marsha. Is that with commissions or without? Knowing that break even point, you guys, is just super, super, super important. I mean, that's, this is what it's all about. Yeah. All right, so when we're in a trade, and I'm showing the mechanics of the trade, we have a, I have a negative three set here for my stop, and I got a positive four set up here. Now, funny thing, I lost a long, I lost a short trade, and I wouldn't want to lose a long trade now, but people will do that when they change their mind about positioning. They always get it wrong. 
and um, they start cherry picking, they start overriding what they're seeing, they start making excuses that are all anecdotes in their head. They start having days like yesterday where they're like, I just said, what today I'll go by and I didn't take a trade and I should have. Well, maybe, maybe not. Um, but certainly the, the, there's nothing about uh, so what's happening the trading to our daily. You should make money yesterday. <sighs> Uh, In fact, the opposite is true. Doji, certain, possibly. On certain, certain levels. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, I mean, Armin, were you just uh, hedging? You are, uh, it's going to go down soon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you mean it's going to go down? You mean like a bit of movement is going to happen or the price is going to go down soon? That shit's gonna happen. Oh, I have insider knowledge. How do you calculate what? a break even point? I have insider knowledge, insider knowledge for uh, crypto. Oh, for crypto? Oh, cool. Yeah. 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 I'm kidding. He said, um, right. he's expecting big things from BTT and Tron. Um, yeah, Armin, I was just I was just joking. But one one really key thing about trading is we don't think. We think you get in trouble. Every time yeah, I really, thought uh, I thought what I thought the market was gonna do, I those have been my worst building days by far. Not even close. You what you see. Not, you not, not what you, not what you think. All right, so um, here we go here. Um, this is the formula for breaking even. So if I'm doing a, a what was that, a G7, S5? Now we do G4, S3s, but if I was doing a G7, S5, I would take this formula, you know, where it says G, right? I would plug in the 7, and where it says S, I would plug in the 5. G7, S5. Then I would take this formula, actually, I would go here, I'd get this website. What did you say? Yeah, because most, a lot of people oh, are. I don't not, know, you know, keep bringing her up. Good at the sure algebra. You know, you're good at algebra. <laughs> exactly. You look ahead. Okay. I have no idea. By the way, I'm going to extend my. I'm going to. Um, <laughs> Okay, at the end of this green candlestick, I'm going to make a, I'm going to call a trade for some people. At the end of this candlestick, this is a long trade. Don't set the gain, but the stop is going to equal 24 ticks. Uh, no, 30, 30, 30 ticks. Okay. So, if somebody wants to do that on their simulator, this trade right here, take a long trade. I'll tell you when to get out. It's 30 ticks, though, at the end of this There's long trade. Long okay, I'm going to take my limit order Three. right now and not get out at four point. point. I'm going to get out at <coughs> five. Yeah, I've heard okay. it's too dark. Just to give myself some time because I'm in the middle of a, of a deal. All right. right. And usually I screw myself when I do that. But that's yeah, okay. that's what I was doing. All right. Ride the train. So I'm going to take this. Sorry, folks, I had to interrupt my lesson. So I'm going to take this formula or, or this website and I'm going to copy it into a, 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 a window. And I have what's called a, a calculator equation solver. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, a um, uh, algebra equation solver. I'm going to take this equation, right, where I replace the G with the 7 and X with the 5. I'm going to put it into make the equation. I'm going to say calculate. Boom. And it's going to give me an answer. The answer happens to be a fraction. So again, I'll bring up another tool. It's called a calculator. I'll say 125 well, divided by 3. My break even is 41.66%. 41.67%. So if I'm doing a G7 S5, I need to win 42% of the time. The board got 7. Um, to Yeehaw. make money. That easy. 
I'm going to take these two things. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to put them in the chat. And as a visitor, I'm going to give them to you as a gift. It's a gift that will change your life when you know how to use it correctly. Oh, Lord, mercy. Lord have mercy. All right, so long trade right now, 36 stocks. Is do it on your simulators, folks. Do it on your simulator. Sound a little crazy, doesn't it? <coughs> do that on your simulator. Yeah. You should be in at 28.13 long. 28.13 long. Or have long, simulator have my long 28 13. Okay. And you got a 36 stop. So there's no ball, so I won't take this. No, then uh, no ball. you're going to no get ball, out. So. What do you say? Yeah. Remember, your objective here is not to lose, or is not to win this trade. It's not your objective, it's not to win this trade. Your objective is to manage money. Now, you would also get out, at this point, you would get out at, on the short term, 28.10. So if you lost money and you got out at 28.10, that's where you would get out. You just take that loss, it's a little loss. So right now you're stop. You don't. You wouldn't set your stop there right now. You would just be ready to get out at that point. Well, about I mean, that's the problem with this man's money thing. Right, your stop is still set at thirty something right this second. Yeah, I don't really. That like, I think out. I'm managing money. I just don't know how to focus. Because on that's that. going to change. The component. I think that all these components equal money. I think yeah, money management is more closely related to. Marsha, who are you talking to? Altering race. Check your challenge on auto sim. Oh, oh, no gain set. Stop at 2804. Tell me when to take the profit. Okay, perfect. I'll tell you when to take the profit. Right. And I'll tell you where to reset your stops. Because you're going to reset that stop. It seems like it's um, Hopefully. I mean, I've, yeah, I've reset that stop. Trade and make sure I'm out of the cloud, which I'm, and, uh, I'm going to be right along with So you. I don't know if that's managing money. Take this, uh, having a thousand dollars. Uh, so you don't have a limit, limit price up at the top. I'm managing my money. I'm going to set my limit price up here. I'm going to set my limit price right here. Uh, and I'll, I'll be along with you. Hey, Dave, Dave, did you win? Actually, Dave, yeah. Dave, 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 Yay, seven points. Congrats. Excellent. 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 Another way he uses managing money is when he brings on a visitor, entertains them, or engages them, and says, Which way do you want me to go, long or short? Yeah, so I'd probably have to set my limit up even more. Ratio. Point. But he's managing how and what are you giving him? Yeah, generally it's just a click, a tick, you know. Yeah, right. so. Okay, Marsha. Uh, open up your window to reset your stop. We're not going to reset it quite yet. Because it's bouncing around too much. <laughs> A lot of volatility. That reminds me of the Snickers commercial. Okay, Marsha. 
Parship, reset your stop to 2814 right now. Or everybody else, reset your stop to 2814 right now. Yeah, he's got to buy it. And I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, wait, I don't know what he's got. No, that trades. Uh, I don't I'll be with know. you. Oh, there he is. He moved it. There you go. Ooh. Now, you'll notice, visitors, that earlier today, I made, I lost $150. Um, and fighting with some tools here. Come on, come on. Really? Okay, so I lost 150, and ugh, all right, I can't point to it. I'll deal with that in a minute. Um, all right, so 2814, lock it in. So uh, one, two, three, four. That's actually four points. So right now, the worst I can do is make 50 bucks, or make 200. So I'll make 50 bucks if it goes down to here. If not, I have a really so I'm not the other two people or the other however many people are trading. Their stop is up here. Uh, it, they don't even have a stop going up. They just have a stop going down. All right, so 2814 is your current stop value. Change that stop value right now to 2814 and a quarter. <clears throat> and this is where you're going to leave it for a while. Okay? <clears throat> it's just one year trade. Congratulations. <clears throat> I'm in the profit for the day as well. Actually, if I were to get out right now, I'd make 150, uh, 150 bucks. Even just taking whatever. But I did. Um, now, by the way, what I'm doing right now, does anybody know what I'm doing right now? Anybody? Anybody know what I'm doing right now? What signal I'm on? All you can do is guess. But you shouldn't be scared because you're just you're you're not going to lose straight. Hold on no. a second. Nope. Yeah, artificial intelligence signal. My artificial intelligence signal is the one I'm trading right now. Nope, not trading comfort zone, not hedging. Nope. Nope, nope. The artificial intelligence signal. The computer is giving me signals telling me what to do. Based on AI. This is it. Okay. So I, I took a very counterintuitive trade, didn't I? Um, and... Um, it was very counterintuitive. Yeah, but I didn't. My entry point wasn't when it crossed the 90 minute moving average. We crossed below 90 minute moving average, pretty much below the moving 90 minute moving average. Um, in fact, I don't use a 90 minute moving average. The moving averages are constantly um, being adjusted through artificial intelligence, constantly being looked at. So we're kind of in a holding pattern here. Uh, if we look at the way that we normally trade, we do a situational awareness. What the heck is wrong with my? Stupid pointer. We get out of it. All right. I hate it when I have to fight with my tools while I'm trying to. I've lost my pointer. Now I've got four of them. <laughs> there we go. I've got one of these four work. Okay. Let's see where we're at here. Now I now I don't need it because now the situation has changed. Okay. So it's coming down close to my stop point, and um, so. Um, there we go. And if we look to 
the left makes great sense, doesn't it? <laughs> okay. So the, the thing is, is we want to be in a, um, let, let's play this out. Uh, today we have a very nice, you know, pattern. It's, it's, it's you know, very nice sine wave type pattern. Those are good days to trade in. Yesterday, the signal just went straight up. You can't have decent retracements and decent trading and profit opportunities when the prices are going straight up. You don't have good entry points, right? And when you do have good entry points, you're you're going to get a backward signal. You'll be trading short when you should be trading long. Long when you should be short. We may be getting out of this one here. Uh, Twenty-eight, fourteen, twenty-five. Okay. So, if it, um, <laughs> twenty, isn't it? This could be really, really good, or this could be great. Um, uh, um. So right now you're at one point, one, what, one and a quarter? Your stop set at one and a quarter. Nope, not trading retracement. You can't define what we're doing because it's a different signal setup. It's strictly artificial intelligence. So this is, um, and we're we've got a couple different signals that uh, we're looking at to make it happen. Uh, entry was uh, 28, 13, 25. Okay. Well, where's it downloading <laughs> to? All I'm doing is reading my signals that are coming to me. Telling me what to do. Telling me right now, wait, prepare to move my aim. For my uh, uh, stock. Testing out on you, guinea pigs. <laughs> I've tested, tested those, the same thing for many, many years in a row. Um, there are a couple of components that are unique now. Um, remember I said a while ago I'm going to be asking for some volunteers for something? I'm going to be asking for some volunteers uh, to not be a part of the, 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 the trading sessions, the daily trading sessions, but to go for a week or two into a, into a special meeting room where, uh, into a special meeting room where you have a moderator or two moderators and they're interpreting the signal and making sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing and you're supposed to be doing it. Okay. There's a thing in this industry called liability. If I have a signal that does everything for you without giving you an opportunity to make a decision overtly, because you're always making decisions that can destroy yourself. If if you're not making the if you're not making the decision overtly, uh, then um, You know, you could do some stupid things and, and then blame blame the software, right? Because you overextend yourself, because you were trading too much, because you, right? Uh, so we have to find ways that, that, that not to happen. Um, and it be very highly documented. So we, I need some, I'll be asking for some volunteers. Wow. Here. Let's play this trade out here and see how this thing works out. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, right now, it's telling me to move my stop to 14.5. We'll move to 14.5. Stop at 14.5. Right? And by the way, hey, Don, yes. because yes. this is a good example. I got in a quarter point late. So, do I want to keep it at that one and a quarter point uh, distance? So, I have Actually, want mine at 2814. Oh, it's not. Yeah, it's not distance. You want to do exactly what the signal's saying. If you got in a quarter point late, you want to 
get back on track and say, gotcha, you're just going to make a quarter point less. Gotcha. We're not going to go. No, good question. Great question. Great question, by the way. Yeah. So if you had some slippage, right, because some people have slippage the other direction. So there's a quarter point there. And you notice I'm not moving it back down. And there's a particular reason. It's uh, 28. Um, Fourteen point two five. That might be our exit point, folks. This uh, volatility right here in this. I'm out. All right. So I've made seventy five bucks for the day, um, and you guys made what one and a half points? Is that what it was? One and, and Rob made one and a quarter on that. Oh. Yeah, but there we go. There's only one place that you're going to be able to get this uh, signal here, um, Rick, and that is us. It's, it's, our, it's, our, it's our company's um, uh, creation. We've done and it. We did the BTP program before, but there are money management principles that people have to learn. Right, and so we're trying to take into account and, and build that into a few different things. So I have a programmer that I utilize. Please do not bug him and ask him questions about the program. This is a very secure uh, information kind of thing. Uh, you don't ask him about the signals, okay? Um, don't put him in that position, right? Because if you do, I'm gonna let you have a signal, okay? So. There's things that are appropriate, things that aren't appropriate. So it's not appropriate. Okay. Uh, we will the derived lessons that will come along with utilizing it will be lessons in money management, which is where they should be. Are you familiar with that so thing called we're looking at a couple different uh, couple different signals right now, and then I'm handling the AI component of it. So I segment it. So not everybody's working on all of them. Because I've had people steal okay, so things done before. Now, my programmer wouldn't feel it because his reality is too high for that. He's a really good guy. Uh, but I went back to, I went back and I made some changes. What is influencing the price fluctuations behind the scene, Rick wants to know? Okay. Let's talk about that a little bit. How much time do I have? Uh, about 15 minutes. Okay, so let me bring my ladder up here so you can see exactly what I did today. By the way, we're totally transparent. You can see I sold one, bought it back, I lost 150, and then I uh, made what, 225? And then I made 225, and my net is $75. That doesn't seem like a lot, but I was only trading one contract. And I'm going to talk about your pricing here. I was trading 10 contracts right on this. This would be a $750 day for me. Now, yesterday, I only traded one contract. One small trade, I traded three, but I still was only at one contract yesterday. What did I make yesterday? What did I make yesterday, folks? I don't remember. 825 bucks. So overall, in two days, uh, Monday, uh, I lost money. So, uh, but I'm still up for the week, way up. So let's take this uh, $75 that I made. In order to make that, um, I would be trading a contract that has $3,000. I divide that by $3,000. I actually made 2.5% on my money today. Doesn't sound like a lot, but your bank doesn't give you 2.5% of your money in a year, okay? Uh, unless you're in a, a really, really decent CD or something, right? And maybe, but uh, two and a half percent a day times five days times fifty uh, weeks in a year. That's six hundred and twenty-five percent on your money. Have you ever made that kind of money before? In other words, you took one dollar and you turned it into six. You took a thousand dollars and you turned it into six thousand. You look. You took uh, ten thousand dollars and turned it into sixty. Right. Big money, folks. Big money. Your what? What I did right there looks little, 
do your math. If you can't do that math, you might not want to be a trader. You might want to stick to something else. You might be a okay. uh, You wouldn't want to be a trader. Lunch That's break. Um, look at those percentages. They're huge. They're huge. Not a lot of money. But you're going to be trading different. Uh, I'm only trading one contract here. Sometimes I trade more. You know, and I can show you other things. I so, hate to follow a one contract trade with a two contract trade because then I lose it. And then I'm doing yeah, opposite of what we should be doing, right? Um, even if I'm just demonstrating, I'm still actually mathematically doing the opposite of what I should be doing, which is actually what a lot of people do. Yeah. And that's how they lose money. Um, but uh, there you go. And All right, so, so what's going on behind the scenes to influence does? prices? So well, we're looking at the S&P 500 E-mini. The S&P 500 E-mini is the derivative of the S&P 500. The S&P 500 is the top 500 stock. In the market, on Wall Street. Okay, you heard of the Dow Jones Industrial Average, right? The Dow. The Dow is the top 30 stocks. And these indices or indexes were designed and created for us to get a overall view of the health of the economy to see if we want to invest our money or not. That was before instantaneous. Information. We're in a new age now where we get instantaneous information. My God, people, let's wake up as human beings. We live in a time that is horrible in some ways, but it's great in other ways. So, any technological advancement or de advancement or degradation you get has advantages and disadvantages. The amazing thing is that I can sit at home in my office, <clears throat> I can receive live data from Chicago, put it into a chart, right? It's coming from the Midwest, or uh, yeah. Oh, a little bit west of the Midwest, exactly. north of the Midwest. It's been dead for years. Coming oh, from no. so this coming from yes. Chicago, place trade with my mouth, in every white town, really. broadcast yeah. sounds to you, have other people come on and talk sound, give you lessons, you have 300 people time. online at the same time, tomorrow. and you can watch a damn video of me, which I usually yeah. don't have on. All at the same time. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's a miracle. Oh, well, That's a miracle that, 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 that you can receive instantaneous data, better trading data than the multi multi million years ago. Years ago, they had an advantage, which they might have a hell type something, right? But um, you know, they're receiving information by wire, right? And they subscribe to it, all kind of things, right? And then you'd get your information the next day in the newspaper. Getting, this is all instantaneous. My corporate taxes are due next week and I'm back and forth. You have a computer in the background saying, take this trade, don't take that trade, move your stuff here, move your stuff there. Think about it. Who would not want to do what we do every day? I mean, you don't even want to know what I say behind the scenes. You say, man, you're vulgar. Well, that's because I'm so passionate about Everybody should be doing what we're doing. You can't learn it on the internet. There's no other place to do it. There's no group out there that is going to take those two trades that I took for you today. Why? I don't know of one. Well, I know of two. Well, actually, no. I know of one other one. The other one, they would. He would. He would. Okay? He'd make you wait. Because he don't give a damn. You got the money, you don't. You follow him. Period. That's the way it is. If you want to get the advice from somebody who has what you want, you need to humble yourself. Sure, brown and yeah. say, I love your transparency. Because Absolutely. the person who knows how to do it and the person who's doing it doesn't have time for BS. Right? Because everybody wants what he has. Everybody wants a loan. Every cousin that can't make their rent, who they're, they're going to call. They ain't Ghostbusters. Right? <laughs> right? Um, so everybody wants what they have. Nobody's willing to work with it. You ever heard the story of the little red hen? Right? You know, nobody wanted to get the seed. Nobody wanted to plant it. 
plant the seed. Nobody wanted to weed the garden. Nobody wanted to thin the crops. Nobody wanted to harvest his crops. <laughs> nobody wanted to. Nobody wanted to, uh, you know, grind the grain or whatever. Nobody wanted to bake the bread. Boy, when that bread comes out of the oven, everybody wants a piece of it. And they want to pat you on the back and how great of a how great of a farmer and baker you are, you little red hen. Right? There are some fundamental truths in life that we're crap that we're told every day. We gotta get those things out of our head. And um something I I'd show you guys a video, but some people that are pretty religious oriented would be offended. I'm not. Um, offended by it. Um, some people, you know, anything that, you know, because there's dogma in there, but it just tells you to be reasonable. Um, everybody's special. Now, there, there are things that happened in my life that, man, I've been saved from disaster, you know? Um, and I'm like, wow, I must have a divine life. <laughs> or like to think you do. But it could have been just probability, or maybe it was divine. I don't know. Point is, I don't know. And I have to make sure that my behaviors, because if I do stupid stuff, stupid things happen. And I've done some stupid stuff in life and have suffered the consequences. Still pain. But we do things in life that, at uh, 25 years old that we suffer all our life on. Whether it was buying a car when we shouldn't have, we should have been banking that money. But instead, we wanted to buy a new car. Seriously. I need a new car to give me point A to point B. And if I don't trust my car to drive from Tucson to Phoenix, I need to rent one. If I can't afford to rent one, then I need to reevaluate why am I going to Phoenix? I can't afford it. <laughs> you know? Because I want to go there. We deserve to go there. I deserve to go there now. <laughs> you know? Bro, I... you write that down in your diary. <laughs> no, I didn't write that down. I don't live in America, darn it. I observe it as a cell phone. No, you don't. They're expensive. You need to get a cell phone when you can afford it. Because everybody else has a cell phone. Now, unfortunately, the unfortunate thing that's happening is shit. You know, you can't pay your mortgage if you don't have a Google account. <laughs> you know? So the world's kind of going that way, so they're kind of forcing you to have to Oh, engage in the sense of activity. What? Right? Because you're absorbing the cost of their labor of automating their stuff. Oh, um, and that's the way it is. Um, wow, well, I got another trade signal right here. You know, uh, I missed it. <laughs> I was talking. Sorry about that, guys. I had another trade signal just a little bit. Just a little bit ago, but I missed it. All right. Um, so, yeah, th there you go. So, oh, what was it? Oh, so what's going on behind the scenes? I'm sorry, I digressed a little bit. Um, what's going on behind the scenes? There's 500 stocks that's being traded, and there's even more people that are that are going. What's going on in this price? Right? Well, what's the value of this, and, and, and how do I perceive that value? And the big boys are looking for what? They're looking for discounts. Now, who asked that question about the price? About what's going on behind the scenes? I'm going to show you something. Ah, Rick. Rick. It's even simpler than that. Think about, oh, where do you live, Rick? Where do you live? Georgia. What uh, area? Rick still on. Real singles, real fun, half hour free. I see Rick Seller. Oh, free real strategy? For us. We'll break it down. This is going to be amazing. That's right. Whatever it is. That's my bread for the end of life. Okay, uh, can you guys hear me? Rick, I'll go through this explanation, but I, I don't want to waste my time. So I want to make sure you're listening. Oh, Rick Bates left, so he asked a question, but he left. Okay. Well, I guess Rick don't get the answer, the biggest answer to his question here. Okay, I'll tell everybody else because they don't want to keep them. That's where the so who's Rick? Guy. Who's Rick's um person? Who's Rick? Oh, really? Um, I think you pulled up one of those. I'm kidding. <laughs> 
but I feel like that's where they advertise. Right. Kylan, well, Kyle needs to be on the phone for it. Find out uh, if he had a technical issue or whatever, because I'm just because I'm getting ready to give a really cool lesson uh, based on Rick's question. A Robin <laughs> Atlanta United playing to, uh, not Atlanta, Mexico. By the way, I was talking about communication. If you ask a question and you're going to leave, make sure you tell people you're leaving. Maybe he did and I missed it. I don't know. But, all right. So, look to the right. Yeah, cool. All right. So, thanks. Uh, <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> Matthew. Um, uh, I like that. All right. So, here's the deal, visitors. Rick had a, a very astute question. What's driving this pricing? What's driving the pricing is what drives everything in your life. Everything oh, is an I'm auction. My, my everything is an auction, like an old tiny auction. And be sure, Kyle, when you talk to him, tell him you, you missed a great lesson based on this question. But maybe he had to go to work. Maybe there's a reason, whatever. But he should have communicated that. All right. Maybe he did it. I missed it. Well, my bad. All right, but that's part of communication, part okay. of being an adult, right? Okay. Uh, you know what I'm getting at, right? Okay, so everything is an auction in life. Everything's an auction. Over here, if you look, and I can't draw and, and do this at the same time. If you look at this dom over here, and you look, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'm going to draw here and we draw here. Okay. If you look up, there's a bid price and an ask price. Rushly. Is that still a big thing? Okay. Every time somebody asks a price and then somebody gives that price, a sale takes place. And that's the current price. That's the current price that you see moving up and down. That's when somebody agreed on a price. My brother said, which think about an auction. Except, I mean, now, this auction goes both ways. But think about a one way this auction. Is exactly like, like mine. You're sitting there, there's an auctioneer up there with a gavel. So not sure. you're gonna have to and he says, Look at this mighty fine antique dresser. Right? Uh, 18th century, you know, built 1776. Declaration of Independence was uh, partially drafted on this dresser. Great historical value. Who give me ten thousand dollars for this dresser? Right. I am looking ten thousand dollars. You ten. Okay, I got ten. So he's telling you what he's asking. Who give me ten? He's asking. He says, "I got ten. He's he's telling you what the bid was, right? So he asked, "Did you get ten? Somebody said, "I'll give ten. There's a bid. He says, then he says. I got 10, or there's 10, or he says something, but he indicates what was just bid. And then he says, I'm looking for, or who give me, or whatever. He'll say, who give me 11? the clerk. Right? Oh, I got 11 over here. Okay, good. You're right. I got 11. Now he says, who give me 12? Right? So they, okay, I got 11, who give me 12? Got 12. Who give me 12? 12, 12, 50. You know, who give me 13? Got 13, look at 14, got 14, look at, right? So it's telling you, I'm just using the same words. You'll use all kinds of different words depending on the auctioneer. So he's telling you, somebody's giving me this amount, and now I'm going to raise the asking price, and now I got a bid on that asking, asking price. <laughs> what happens when a lot of people are bidding? The price is going up very quick. They're competing. What happens? When the auction is not so sure well, it wants to move ahead, it slows down. People drop well, out. There are women well, in the audience well, with their arms folded, hitting their husband in the, in the ribs, telling them, don't bid anymore. The auctioneer up there on his stand can see all this data. He knows his job is to get the highest price because he's on commission. The more... He sells it for the more commission he gets. That's his job. That's why he's got little helpers. Come on over here. Drag him up there. Feel this dresser. The Declaration of Independence was like John Hancock used this dresser to to edit it <laughs> before it was signed. You know? Now, um, can you imagine that? Put yourself back in the 1700s. Right. Um, look. His job is to get it up there, so 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 he wants to ask higher prices, and he wants the bidders to go up in higher prices. 
I told you guys a while ago, I said I had a signal here that I missed. What's what's happening? <laughs> okay. That was an AI signal. Boom. Okay. So, it's an auction. You're looking at an auction going on right here. That's an auction going on. You can see the bid prices and the ask prices. And when those two prices, yes, stay away from those two prices, when somebody bids what the asking price is, you know, that's an interesting okay. point. The sales name, that's the new price. Yeah. So people are bidding, and you're looking at an auction. Auction under, from uh, uh, that's the undercurrent, and that's what drives the market. It drives everything. You're saying you may wear on drives, an auction drives yeah. everything. Not all the time. Okay. Um, you know, my nickname is, uh, my nickname is Brown Tucson. Is uh, El Guapo. <laughs> it's not. I, I would like it to be. <laughs> okay. We can find out the inside of the box. Not El Chapo, El Guapo. Okay, that's my nickname, right? So, <coughs> uh, it is not. I'm but, uh, yeah. Not a hair out of place. So. Let's say I'm single and I want to mingle. And I go to the grocery store, and there's a just this something about this woman. Wow! I just came here for a loaf of bread, and there's this beautiful, beautiful woman. And I'm in. I heard her talk to some guy, and I'm wow, a beautiful voice. She just presents herself well. I'm like, wow! I, 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 you know, she doesn't have a ring on. You know, and that's why I want to talk to her. So I approach her, and now the auction is on, right? Uh, if I talk to her, that's an offer for her to talk back. That's, 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 that's I'm asking for her to talk back. And then she can make a bid, <laughs> right? She can size me up. Is this guy wearing, wearing no socks, ratty, a ratty pair, because I'll go to the store, I'll have on a pair of shorts, a ratty t-shirt, no socks, and, uh, you know, some brogue, and, you know, <laughs> looking like a, <laughs> looking like a crackhead or something, you know, um, and she can look me up and go, oh, here's a dude, he, uh, where's he going to take me for lunch, you know, a hot dog stand at the beach, which doesn't exist, but let's we'll say it did, you know, she's going to be, Oh, hey, thanks, 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 uh, Eduardo. Um, Eduardo. We'll talk to you later. Uh, perfect. Um, so the, bid, the, the auction is on. So I have to manage the risk of the reward. You know? Maybe I look at her cart. I look at her shopping list. She's got a shopping list that long. She's got two items in her cart. Hey, I can run home real quick and change. <laughs> right? You got to look at the data. Because right? the auction's on. i got to present myself. <laughs> right? Okay, <laughs> so, auction is on. Uh, so, there's another option. Um, when you're talking about Walmart, you know, is Walmart an auction? You're darn right it is. But you don't think of it. Right. We have homework, the fact that we do, that shows Walmart is nothing but an auction. All your retail stores are auctions. They're going to ask you the price of the good. They got it down to a science that is going to produce them the most revenue. Okay? And there's a lot of things that go into those calculations. And most of it is revenue per square foot and inventory term. Yeah, okay? So Very complex so retail is. They only have a certain amount of space. They want to make sure that the things that they put... And the three amigos. those spaces are very high value items. When they say high value, they could cost a penny. They could cost five hundred dollars, right? I don't mean just Birds. high price. High price and high value are two different things. What I mean by high value is if I put it on the end here and I'm making a dollar per sale, are they flying off the shelves? No. Like or can I put one big item on there, make five hundred dollars? But it's only flying off the shelf 200 times as, or 200 times as slow. They have to price according to 
not necessarily just how many sales yeah, they can get, but what the profit is for so those sales exactly. and what the revenue is in that space that they have allocated. So they only have, you know, maybe they got 20,000 square feet. They got 20,000 square feet. They know how much revenue they need per square foot. And they know and when they have end caps, that everybody sees the end cap items. Those are high visibility items that have high profit margins. And when I say profit margins, I'm not only talking about I bought it for a dollar, I can sell it for ten. Okay? Because if you got a dollar and you can sell it for five, but you have high inventory turn, you're selling three times as many, that's a that's a profit margin of 150 uh, percent more than the other one. Okay? So they balance these things. But it's an auction. If nobody's buying that item at that price, they will lower the price or liquidate that inventory. So they get turned on inventory. They may even liquidate it at a loss. Why would they why would they sell something for a loss? Because because they could put something else in that space that makes money. So why sit if something's not making you any money? Right? Why have an asset around that's not making you money? Sometimes there's a reason. Sometimes you have employees that don't make you money. And you have business decisions to make. So let's say I have an, a construction company. I have 100 people. I'm a, I own a framing company. I frame buildings. And let's, let's not say I have 100. Let's say I have 25 guys that work for me. But I don't have any jobs out there. But they need money to feed their families. So I pay them but I don't have enough work to keep them all really busy. Do I get rid of them? Well, a lot of people would say, yeah, I heard employees thought we'd get rid of them. Well, that's a very non-sophisticated way of looking at money. Because when I do get a job, guess what, what I need? I need employees. Are the employees that I got rid of going to come back and work for me and be diligent? Maybe not. Now the cost of retaining an employee exceeds, and the cost doesn't just, well, what cost of retaining an employee? You put an ad in. No, you don't. You're not thinking like a, a business owner. The cost is I've got jobs to do, and I'm having to spend the time to get employees. I'm losing revenue because I can't get done with that job and move on to the other jobs I have stacked up. <clears throat> I'm losing revenue. Cost come or, or revenues come in potential, and they come in realized, right? So I have what's called opportunity cost, and I'm it's killing me because I got rid of my framers, and now I need them to take care of these opportunities. Now it was stupid to get rid of my framers during a slow time when they weren't making me money. I have to balance those two concepts as a business owner that owns a framing company. I don't own a framing company, but if I did, I would, right? Every business is like that. You have people that just suck up money. And everybody else is supporting those, right? Uh, suck up money. Um, bookkeepers, bookkeepers suck up money. Your accountant makes you money. Bookkeepers, they suck up money. They're just, they're an expense. You're really not doing anything productive. You're not making any more money, whatever, da, da, da. But they are logging the money so that your accountant can help you make good critical. Your controller, your controller can come to you and go, look, our receivables are going out the roof. Um, your cost of that inventory sitting out in that yard you have, you got shit out there you haven't used in 30 years. Let's sell it, get rid of it, free up that space for something that's productive. We have a framing company. We've got a yard out here where we're holding wood. Why don't we get smart and get rid of the crap we have out there and build some trestles for people so that we can also utilize all this wonderful space that we have so we can build custom trestles so that when we're not working on a job, we can now build trestles. And all these employees that I have, they're sucking up money from me because they're not producing me money, can make me money by building trusses 
something of value when they're not at a job site putting up walls, putting up trust. See what I'm saying? Let's maximize what we have. Your comptrollers help you make decisions like that. The bookkeepers don't. Unless you've got an exceptionally smart bookkeeper, in which case you're going to have to make them a VP of operation. <laughs> okay. So you make these business decisions. Most of the employees and associates and subcontractors and things like that have no idea of the sophistication of the things that you're thinking about to balance your income and balance your potential when things do rock and roll and things aren't working. And sometimes those things take a week, a day to implement. Sometimes they take a week. Sometimes they take years to implement. Sometimes you implement a plan and shit, the whole market has turned around on you. Now you have to go back to plan C, implement it. Now, oops, now you're back to plan B because the market turned around again. <clears throat> everything is an auction. Everything has risk and everything has reward and we learn to balance that. And so he was asking, what drives this market? It's an auction. So you think about normal auctions, you think about it a little bit. And when you join our academy and you start trading and you start doing this, you start learning how the auction works. Because the auction works primarily based on mob mentality. There are some fundamentals in here that you would look at, like the fundamentals of the entire market. Because you have so many market segments, the fundamentals are hard to analyze. So we don't even try because we're in a daily, we're, we're in a daily grind. So we're just looking at the data of, what the, of the behavior of the mob mentality. So if you're good at psychology, looking at this data going in here, and you go, wow, it's all that. But look, this was a critical price. Here we can see critical prices based on mob mentality. What drives, what drives an auction? Right? Storage wars, what drives an auction? Well, the auctioneer, and he's, he's regulating his auction and managing his auction based on what? Mob mentality. He's looking at the signals down there. Oh, this lady took her little paddle with a number on it, and now she's sitting on it. Right? She's probably not going to be bidding any second soon. I have to motivate that woman right there. That auctioneer's looking at this stuff. This dude right here, his wife is poking him in the ribs not to go higher price. Why doesn't my assistant bring her up here and let her touch that dresser? This mid-18th century that John Hancock helped edit the Declaration of Independent Thought, and it has this great pedigree, and get her emotionally involved. And then she's not, she's not um, dresser blocking her husband, <laughs> right? Or vice versa. The husband, get him involved. Let him feel the emotion. They're manipulating the emotion of the mob based on auction theory. This is all auction theory. And the technicals tell us about that auction theory. And the money management allows us to make money based on the auction theory. I am ahead today, again, by 2.2.5% or, or whatever it is, based on money management, the auction theory, not based on understanding that uh, Kellogg's is coming out with a new cereal and is going to drive uh, Wall Street crazy or Google is not doing so well uh, because they're invading everybody's privacy. Right? We don't need to know all that crap. Who cares? Right? There was a shooting at the DMV because the lines were too long. <laughs> okay. We don't, we don't care about that news. It will affect us. The market will recover from it and it'll go on because the auction moves on and mobs forget about the last thing that happened to them. Well, actually, they remember the last things that happened to them, but they, whatever. Okay. This last AI signal here, uh, this last signal that came in would have made one and a half points. Yeah, that one. About one and a half. By the way. Thanks, guys. I got to run to uh, visitors. Hope you learned something today. Um, about 15 minutes past the hour. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't get to a couple of things I want to get to here. Uh, real quick. Well, let me see here. Volunteers. Okay. So I'm going to need some volunteers for the, um, and I've got a couple good idea of people if they want to do it.
So four to six sessions, I want to implement like pretty quickly. I want to have four to six sessions. And it's, it's like the one to three, it was kind of an experimental session. And I need somebody to go in here that's dedicated or a couple of people. They can switch days. And what you're going to do is at the beginning, you're going to bring, so you have to be good at your playbacks, bring up a playback and analyze a trade of the day long and maybe a winner and a loser or just a winner or just a loser, whatever. We'll discuss them. And then a trade of the day short uh, from the five to six session. Both of those sessions, you will cover visitor information for visitors. Just a five minute, 10 minute block of, hey, visitors, welcome. This is what we do. This is how we do it. And we're going to analyze these trades and see how you do it. And then we move from there as a uh, experimentation. The reason the four to six is because the market, uh, we're not in the market during those times, four to six. It'll be four to five, and then five to six. I'm gonna need some volunteers to, to, to work on that, get onto that, and we're gonna take a look at that and maybe switch a few things around. The other thing is I need to get a list of about uh, five people. Um, uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a trade right now and just, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'd love to close my dog. Too tempting. Money just sitting right there looking at me. <laughs> let me. All right, let me get rid of this thing. Okay. I'm out. Money's just sitting there going, hey. <laughs> but I'll get. I don't want to get on that. Okay. So, um, the other volunteers are. I need about five people that want to sit uh, from nine o'clock in the morning until three o'clock in the afternoon. And take AI trades. There'll be a moderator on there, or actually a couple moderators. Uh, actually, everybody can be on mic. Five of you on mic. Just keep your mic muted. And when you see something happen, somebody say who's going to talk, and you know it happened here. But I'll have I'll have one person kind of kind of. Uh, I talked to somebody yesterday that I think would be a really really good candidate. Very very smart. A really really good candidate to to. Be the primary moderator on the chart. And so, you know, get in contact with uh, uh, get in contact with uh, me on the Alabama number two five one number. Don't know what that number is. Um, it's the two five one number. Alabama you can try to Text me there, and then we'll we'll do that. And uh, start. It's going to be a week or two off. Um, okay. So we're going to do those two things. Also, the amount of uh, way the company has grown over the years. Really dedicated. Um, for traders because you got other stuff going on, but great for traders because you're talking about trading all the time. And when you're talking about trading, you can really implement those rules. And it, it's a wonderful teaching. Being involved is a wonderful way to get you to trade. It's about that communication element. Um, and so, so that's a pretty significant thing. Uh, because once I get the AI up and going, um, and get these signals to work the way that we want them. Test them out on a few people here. Um, now you could trade the uh, you could trade the simulator when you're doing it, or a couple people that can afford it. You could trade a live. You know, it's up to you. Uh, just let us know what you're going to do, and uh, but you have to take the signals. You can't cross evaluate the signals. You got to take them as they come. All right. Um, Simmer live doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, does it? You know, Simmer live, um, and you'll be watching the signal like this on your on the screen, um, and you're not going to be like interpreting it. You're just going to take it. You're going to see the signal. It'll tell you what to do. You just do what it says. Do what the screen tells you to do. Don't worry about the slippage. Don't worry about anything else. If there's some crazy, well, I don't know, yeah, don't even, yeah, just do 
the screen now. The whole deal. And uh, you don't have to be like, uh, preferably, just, you know, we'll have a warning signal saying, hey, it's coming up. And then you watch it, boom, signal comes in, you take it. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, these signals are going to be, you know, the thing is, these signals are going to be very, very valuable. Very, very valuable. Um, the thing is, um, it'll, it may be based on, you know, your level of trading. So, you know, you'll have, you'll have a deal. And if I catch anybody reselling the signals or anything like that, you're in a lot of trouble. <laughs> okay. Um, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be, um, having somebody pay for the signals and think they're going to create a little group. Hey, one of us will pay for the signals and our other five will trade on them. Is the last time this, that was the bullshit that was going on. Stop it. You ruin it for everybody. And I'll call your ass out. And then we're going to have another problem. Right? I'm going to, right? So don't do stuff like that. And you would think that people wouldn't do stuff like that. And it should go without saying. Okay? But you're going to swear with pinky blood that you're not going to do stuff like that. You're going to follow the rules. Otherwise, you won't have the signal. And then you're going to be trying to get other people to get in to get the signal. And you're going to try to steal and get away around. Don't do stuff like that. Those very few of you that do. Right? So I had problems last time. It was along that line. And I didn't talk about it openly too much in public because it's kind of a negative thing. But we're very transparent here. So we're talking about a lot of stuff. So I'm talking about it now. Be sure when you have those privileges and those opportunities in life. You don't get stupid. What are you looking at? Okay. Um, because it's a stupid thing to do to steal like that. He was it's talking about cool. going in. And people here have witnessed it. He took right, Rob? Down. Are you on mic? This looks like a good one. Yeah, Yes, I witnessed it. I was here when that happened. You see, so I know. You've seen a couple of good one to go short on. I've seen a few different things happen. Oh, yeah. so I got to yes. go long. And they're they were very Pinky underhanded. Stick. They were very I had a lack of integrity. Pinky and stick. Uh, lose it. That's they're no longer here. Let's put it that way. They're no longer here. Yeah. And a couple of them are very very lucky. Well, a couple of them aren't so lucky because we had, had a couple. I took a couple actions that they weren't really happy with. And um, next time, I'm going to be body slamming some people. Woo! My attorney is waiting in the lead. Don't do it. Like say, don't do it. Because you're breaking federal law. And so I'm going to design this so that you're breaking federal law. Someone was paying for it. And deal with me. You can do the right thing or you can deal with the best. Oh, I see. Go. How about that? So, yeah. and Doc, can, you can always deal with Doc. Sometimes you won't like what he has to say. But he will always listen. Always. Yeah, I'll always listen. And um, is this like old English? Because <laughs> I don't want to guide, guide, whatever. But then other times I do. So, but yeah. So just, just, and be aware. You know, if you see other people doing stuff like that, you know, um, they're they're harming What's what you love? have. So it, it happens. Even it happens all the time. So some some of those some of those things are more some of those violations are more egregious than others. But when we're talking about something as sensitive as trade signals and stuff that cost untold amount of things uh, resources to develop, um, it's very 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 serious. Michelle and Rodney. So they they, they don't have a program. Programming. They just magically appear. Very nice. <laughs> they seem like it. Well, hey. <laughs> Great first trade. Great first trade um, on our AI experiment. I missed the other one, um, but uh, that was that was kind of cool. So love you guys. Uh, see you later and tomorrow. What is tomorrow? What day? What day is today? Um, it's Wednesday. So we'll see you guys tomorrow and take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks, Doc. And, and for anybody uh, for tonight's study group, if they want to test their mic. Um, after um, uh, Pat and Burr and Gibbs are on, uh, jump Mike. on. Matthew will hang around and help people with their mic so we can collaborate tonight. When you join the session tonight, Do you um, know if it raise your hand. In general? Just raise your hand can you and hear Matthew will give you a mic.
Oh, okay. So at least uh, we'll our mics. Very important. We want to do this the right way. Uh, we want to be able to collaborate, but we can't have people talking all at one time. So if you've got something to say, unmute your mic. Typically, don't interrupt people. Be courteous. Oh, man. Uh, Cody, Derek, and I will be the primary presenters, and then you guys will have the opportunity to chime in when appropriate. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys tonight. And again, test your mics. We don't have to go through too much of that tonight when we uh, have the session. And it's, again, it's at 8.30 East Coast time, 5.30 Central. So we'll hope to see you guys there. And uh, be prepared for some homework. Don't try to understand it. Just do it. And we'll talk about the results next week. All right? Take care, folks. Yes, sir. Blech. Are you losing? No. Were you around when uh, Doc had um, AI intelligence discussions? Or he had his own. Essentially, he he did what he's doing now in the past before a person ruined it for everyone. In his own little mind, he has everybody after him. Seems to be better now. But before, it was like you heard it every day for months really? when I first started. Everybody's after him, everybody's at peace, everybody. Then my, some of my conversations and some of his people. And, Dude, you got a lot of problems I don't want to be involved with. Are you losing? No. Why did you take it off? Because the trend is pretty much down. I thought we were at the top of the mark. Right.